Okay. Is that clear now? Yes. Okay. So, in case of topic, what happens? If I publish the message, message one, message two, message three, message four, and now for this topic, there will be a subscribers. The moment I publish the message M1, this will get delivered to all these three guys. This also will get delivered to all these three guys. This also will get delivered to all three guys. Now you'll be thinking in which scenario I supposed to use topic and in which scenario I supposed to use the queue. Now think about your, your school, right? When you go to school, when you submit your document, now you'll submit document to admin. This information has to be shared with multiple, uh, your library has to sync this data. Same time, your, your admin has to have this data. Your postal has to have this data. Your blah, blah, blah systems are there where you, you, need to, you need to send this information in one shot. All are independent, right? In that case, all this tomorrow, if some other system comes, right? They just need to subscribe to this topic. That's it. They don't need to do anything. This information will be shared with all the subscriber. This is called multicasting or broadcast. Am I clear? Yes. This is the difference between topic and this is the difference between Q. Hope that is clear. Now, let's try to go ahead and consume this message. This message is there on my Q, right? Let's try to consume this message. So I have a second URL, which will go ahead and consume this. Now let's go ahead and have a look at it. Where it will go? It will go to this listener and we have, JMS, we have consume operation. So this will consume. Now while consuming here, have a look at it. We have multiple options to acknowledge. Body. Select this. Acknowledgement manual immediate manual okay so immediate and manual we have here so if i go with the manual that means you understand it that means i have to manually acknowledge my queue if there is something wrong in this uh, between before uh, before acknowledging my vmq right what will happen mm -hmm. the vmq won't won't be getting any acknowledgement so whenever there is an error, you need to go to the, the error handling and you need to recover that session. So we have option called recover also. So what do you mean by recover? Recover, whenever there is a problem in case of sending acknowledgement uh, manually, okay, this recover section will take care of re-delivering message back to the, the flows, to the listeners. That is the responsibility of this guy recover session but you need to be okay i don't need this whenever i'm uh, you know selecting this guy it will it will give me option to you know drop it somewhere else okay so once let's say now consume this message and see very important thing here you'll get something uh, you know acknowledgement id with this guy okay so right now i have not triggered anything so let's go ahead and consume the message first. So when you consume the message from your, uh, you know, uh, queue, right? What is, what is the message? This is the message we have published in the queue and now we are consuming from there, right? Now in this attribute section, one important thing will come that is called acknowledgement ID. That means if you want to manually acknowledge, use this acknowledgement ID. So in the manual acknowledgement, I'll go ahead and I'll use this ID, attributes.acknowledgement ID. Now think about it, after consuming, before sending acknowledgement, something goes wrong here. So where it will go? It will go to this section. 
And here also in the recover sections, I'm using same ID. So what it will say, it will tell my DMQ, hey, I consume the message, but while processing the message, something went wrong. You please don't delete that message from the queue. Keep that message as it is inside the queue. Okay, and re-deliver the message. Okay, am I clear so far? Before sending manual acknowledgement to my VMQ, something went wrong. That means the consumed message will be lost, right? And if this consumed message is lost, your VMQ will wait for some time and that guy also will delete the message. You don't need to lose anything from your, your message queue, right? So error scenario, you need to go to error handling section and say that recover session. Recover session will take care of not losing any data. Okay. And this is the scenario when you are thinking about manual acknowledgement. Now, second option is let's look at this. Okay. So, why I'm uh, running in debug mode? I wanted to show that property acknowledgement ID. So, there has to be a link. When I, when I, you know, consume the message, so I'll get an ID, unique ID for that message. So the same message has to be responded back, right? So in manual acknowledgement also, and in the recover session also. The manual approach is clear? Yes. Right? Now let's say immediate. If I go here and let me, let me go ahead and finish this off. So the message has been received, right? And process, there was no error. Manually acknowledgement has been sent back to my queue. And now if I refresh it, right? the message is no more in my queue. This is happy scenario where there was no problem. Okay. Now I quickly go ahead and show you one thing. Okay. So if I go ahead quickly here and manually generate some scenario where I'll say raise error. I'll drag this guy over here. Okay. And now here's some, something we'll write. Okay. So this is uh, custom. Uh, colon error. Okay, this is a custom error. Okay, save this. Manually, I'm generating some error. So now, console, it will redeploy my flow. It's redeploying it. Okay, redeployed. Let me go here. So before that, what I will go, I can go ahead and manually add the message here, okay? So if I go here and say, uh, Q, I'll add some message over here, okay? So I'll say message, colon something because last message is already processed right or or do one thing and why what we'll do instead of doing this let's publish the same message again so it will go to my queue now the message is there in my queue one message is there if you look at this message is there We'll go ahead and try to hit the consume. Okay. We'll come back here. And it will it will say next. Next. This guy will throw error. Where it will go? It will go to the error handling. And it will recover this. And if you go back to my postman, an error occurred properly, it will show here. And if I go to my queue, my message will be intact here if I refresh this. Hey, it has to be. So what? Consume here manual only. The message should not be deleted. Recover section attributes acknowledgement ID. I need to look into it. Okay, this one.
I need to see that why this is not happening. The message was consumed. I said manual acknowledgement. Here. It is not passing through. No, no, it is passing through. So it is actually erasing out. It should not delete the message from my queue, right? Refresh. Yeah, I need to see this. Okay, so it is different, uh, different behavior I could see right now. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> it is showing that two message queued, right? Yeah, yeah. It is showing that two message enqueued. That means in my queue, two messages are hmm. uh, but it's published not and two messages are dequeued also. Yeah, it is not showing that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I need to uh, do little research on this. Okay. Okay. So we need to understand the concept. Okay. So why that mm -hmm. guy is. That's, you 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 got my point right how manual is working okay yeah. okay now if i go with the immediate uh, acknowledgement right what will happen it will immediately acknowledge this guy and now if something went wrong right so i need to go to my error handling section here and i need to have some other mechanism to keep that message because this guy immediately acknowledged okay so from the queue the message is deleted so that same similar scenario we have seen right now, but that should not be the case. Okay. Something somewhere is missing. So in that case, I need to publish that message to some other queue. We call it some dead letter queue. Okay. So from this queue, the message is already gone. Somewhere we need to keep that message. So that concept we call it dead letter queue. So we can create some other queue and we can keep that message in dead letter queue. Okay. Okay. And from there, we'll be processing those message, uh, you know, some other way. You know, some data errors are there in that message. So those has to be monitored, reviewed, and then only processed back. Because there was some error. Either your connection issue or while processing something went wrong. That's the reason that message is there in the date later queue. Clear? Immediate, manual, and auto. Auto, after execution of your flow, Manual, you will decide where to send or, you know, immediate means immediately you'll be sending back once you consume the message. Okay. Clear? Let's mm -hmm. see this. That is active MQ. Okay. Where instead of using in-memory queue, we can keep our message outside of our, our, uh, our uh, mule workers. And now this VM, uh, these queues can be used by some other non mule applications also. Once you publish it, it will be available for non mule applications also. Okay, so we can we can take help of uh, you know other uh, brokers also like AnyPoint MQ, like our uh, 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 SNS SQS. All these guys you can we can go ahead and use them. Okay, okay. So so far. Let me let me continue. So now I have two POCs. Okay. So first one, it will be real quick. Okay. So let's go ahead and now uh, are we okay, right? We're okay to continue, correct? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. 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 So let's say I am getting a data. So this data could be coming from a CSV file or some 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 database, right? So somebody is creating data for me, and based on that data, I need to create a records in my sales code, my FTC. Okay. Yep. So in this scenario, what I'll do, I'll I'm going to create accounts, objects in the sales force. So I'll be I'll be getting a data, okay? And that based on that data, I'll be going to Salesforce and I'll I'll be saying, hey, create accounts object for me. 
second POC, same records I'm getting it. Okay, same set of records. Now, instead of creating records over here, I need this data for my for my auditing point of view. So what I'll do, either I can insert this data in the database. We have seen already that POC. Okay, there are multiple ways we can write that data to the database. Bulk insert, normal, uh, the triggers. Yeah. What I want is I want better storage. So we'll go with AWS S3 bucket. And we'll create object over there in S3 bucket. Okay. okay, these two POCs we'll see now. So let me go back to my AnyPoint Studio. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to the Mule. Now let me close this Active MQ now. Close this project. I'll go here and close this broker also. I don't want this. Okay, so it's closed properly, properly, gracefully shut down. Okay. In re in real scenario, um, uh, we should go like this only. Uh, by like for running the any queue. No, no. This will be hosted on a proper server which is uh available twenty four by seven, which is secure, which is is there in the data center somewhere, or it is uh, uh you know available as a SaaS application, so publicly uh you know on public internet, but very secure way. So this infrastructure has to be run by some other other person, not by you. So Apache, Apache, ActiveMQ, those guys will be giving us service. So what's, what we just need to go and take the license from there. Any point MQ, we need to just go and buy the license. They will okay. be uh, taking care of infrastructure. They'll be taking care of security. They will be taking care of scalability, reliability, everything. Mm -hmm. Not for any point platform at all. Okay. Okay. We are not going and starting those queues and all those stuff. No. Okay. 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 Let's come back to our AnyPoint Studio. Let me start with Salesforce first. So for this for this use case for this POC, okay, we need to have first the Salesforce developer account. Okay. So we need to have Salesforce developer account. I'll go ahead and I'll I'll say, uh, Control Shift T. Okay, so you go ahead and create a developer, Salesforce developer account. Hope you have already. Okay, now from here, you can go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, go to home. Okay, so here maybe you can search for accounts or plus you can add accounts over here and click on that. So right now you can go ahead and uh, look for all the accounts. Right now, we will be having uh, some uh, out of the box. We'll get some accounts, right? And I have created some for my POCs. So you'll find accounts over here. So right now, let's say uh, with the Kunal name, we'll create one account over here. Okay. Okay. So right now, with the Kunal, uh, you can directly go to the K here and see that. Is there any account with Kunal? No. Right now, no. Okay. So our intention is to create this. Uh, accounts over here. Now, what all I need? So basically, my mule application has to connect my my Salesforce, right? For that, we need few information. So let me let me first uh, show you that. Okay. So let me go to my configuration. Okay. So if you want to configure Salesforce, okay. So you need username, you need password, and you need security token. So there are multiple ways of communications. Either you can go with the basic authentication, you can go with the OAuth 2.0, JWT, OAuth username and password, multiple. But for our POC, we'll go ahead and use basic authentication. So now how to get this security token? You may be aware, aware of it, but let me. Yeah, I, I'm aware of that. Okay, so just From for, that. yeah, just for my, my uh, I'll go to my settings, personal, and here I'll click on this reset security token. Once you click on this, whatever email address you have, you have given, right? Over yep. there, it will send the message. Yep. That yep. security token, I've captured it here and I have added in my configuration mm -hmm. and test the connection. It should be successful. Yep. 
okay if connection successful okay now let's go ahead and run this application first go ahead and run this so meanwhile i prepare my uh, data for this creating uh, account now one thing is very important okay even if you're sending single record to the salesforce we need to send that record in array format that is very very important i struggle a lot you know why should i send a single record in array format right mm -hmm. that same requirement for for salesforce so send the request all the requests come to the salesforce those are in array format okay so that's the reason for even single record i need to create the array okay map right yeah so i'll be using map and i'll be using uh, i'll be creating array and then i'll be sending that request to my my salesforce okay let's have a look at it so let's go ahead and let's prepare the request first so i have somewhere the request salesforce okay so i'm going to create a record for kunal and i'll create a record for uh, give me some unique name so ashish <laughs> i have created those all records okay upal okay mm -hmm. kunal and upal i'm going to create these two records in my mm -hmm. In my account, so let's check with with these names. Do we have any records? We'll go to accounts, and if I go, if I Kunal, definitely there is no record, and Upal, there is no record. Okay, so let's check whether our application is deployed, successfully deployed, and we'll say trigger this, and please, no listener. Hey, come on. Come on. Okay, just hold on. We have deployed already, right? So this has to be. Oh, okay. Control C. Come back here. Control V. Okay. Now every asset in Salesforce, it will be identified by ID. Now see here, since it is this uh, objects are created successfully. You can see here, exception is equal to null. Otherwise, you'll get exception over here. And this guy is returning me a successful response. If you look at C, successful is equal to true. And this is the ID, okay? You can go ahead and by this ID, you can really browse your content, right? If you know, right? So if you go here and uh, somewhere after this, if I give ID directly, it will take you to that object right see here it's taking me to the kunal and all that information see mg road chennai if you look at my content kunal mg road chennai united state excuse me proper now if i go ahead and cross check the upel second id right in the postman this one oh both are different zero one two nineteen are you you know uh, this is zero one two. Am I getting exactly same for both accounts? No. Let me check. Control C. If I go ahead and change this value, Control V. Yeah, Opal, right? Somewhere a one character here and there that looks similar. It, it if you go uh, sorry I was on mute and I was talking uh, so if you see the la uh, the last four fourth one it is M uh, and uh, yep yep here W and here okay yep. here L and it is here W uh, yeah but exactly similar man right yeah de definitely uh, sometimes it gives like eight character as well so yeah yeah okay so this is how we create and. Yes, the real POC will be a little complicated. And this will be a combination of whatever we have learned, right? How to get the data, how to process the data, then whether we should go with the for each or parallel for each or batch job. We need to decide over there, okay? Whether to use VM or whether to use some external broker, which will give me more functionality, right? 
will decide on that and will come up with the complex POC, right? Right now we are we are looking at bits and pieces, but in actual when you work, right, then you'll be connecting all these bits and pieces, and you'll apply the knowledge and you'll come up with one on a really good uh, you know uh, uh, solution, right? Yeah. yeah. Now let me show you the other POC which is my AWS. So let me close this project. I don't want now. I'll say stop this guy. Uh, where is my AWS? Yes. Now, again, this is really straightforward. To connect our AWS S3 bucket, we need to have trial account of our AWS. Okay, so you need to go to AWS. Uh, uh, this should be closed. So go to uh, uh, S3 console. Okay, go create your trial account. And in services, you can go ahead and select S3. Yep, I have this. You have this, right? Yeah, I have this. Okay, now you need to have client ID and client security. How to get that? Go here, security credentials. And you need to create those over here. Access key. Yeah. Here, have, okay? yeah. Now, once you create this, okay, that's it. We, know, we need this information. That Okay, so I'll go to services again. Go to my S3. And here we can create our buckets. Right now I've created for batch 21. Let's go ahead and use the same same bucket, okay? So I have created this batch 21 bucket. I have multiple buckets over here. So either I can go ahead and create one more bucket, but let's go ahead and use this. And I have some files over here. Okay, so let's upload the uh, file from our new application to this S3 bucket. So if I go here, while configuring this guy, if I go to the configuration, it's a very simple configuration for S3 bucket. That's the beauty of our MuleSoft, right? It gives very beautiful, innovative, you know, intuitive UI to configure this. So just need to configure access key and secret key. I'm I'm going to delete this access key and secret key because it's yeah definitely practice. you should not <laughs> yeah best practice you should not share first of all but i wanted to show you okay i yeah. could have done parameterized but uh sorry for that okay yeah so if i test the connection mm -hmm. it's successful perfect now this is my flow what it does it gets the data it gets the data the payload i'll be getting from outside and if you look at this, this is the bucket, patch 21 storage. And now we'll create a new file. We'll create a new file for patch 30. And whatever data is coming in the payload, that will be content of this key. And this key will be a file name. And where it will get uploaded? To this bucket. Very simple. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and we'll try to trigger this. So let me save everything. And let's run this. So meanwhile, we'll go ahead and create some content for our, our so we'll try to, uh, you know, send similar data. And OK, if my app is deployed we will be able to see s3 bucket with new file new json file let's wait for that okay it's deployed let's go ahead and trigger our flow see here it says that it's created now this e tag we can use for identifying our asset, maybe you know the secured links can be created, and those links can be sent to the emails so that you know whoever is getting that yeah. email, they can download directly from there. So we can yeah. create downloadable links uh, from S3 bucket. That's the beauty of S3 bucket, right? That's why we use S3 bucket. Yeah. Right. So now let's go ahead and quick check, quick, you know, quickly check here. Let's refresh this. So where is the refresh option here? Action. No, uh, you need to refresh the page. Yeah. And there is there is a, another option on the top, create folder. 
above the create folder. Yeah. If you see. Uh, objects. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Okay. Now see, that's 30 file got created here. And this is the link I was talking about. You mm -hmm. can go ahead, use it, this URL. It will, it will give you option to download it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if I trigger on that link, it will access denied. And why is that? Why is that? Strange, right? I don't know why. Uh, I think it is not publicly. Uh... No, no, I logged in, right? Why should it's not giving me option to download it? Yeah, there is option to download it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now if I go ahead and download this file on desktop or downloads, you will be able to see the content of this file. Show in a folder. And if I open this file, this is the same content we are we are sending, right? Have a look. Yeah. Right. So that's the thing I wanted to share with you. Okay. And uh, these things we have multiple times we have tried how to consume the REST service. It's a HTTP component over here, and uh, you know we are accessing this request dot in service multiple times. Right. Let me let me show you quickly how we are doing here. So let's say you have external service, okay? So I have request dot in here, request dot in, and this is the REST API service available. We can go ahead, click on single user. We'll get this URL. Now this URL I want to access it from my my new application, right? So I say three here. I will give you three. Right, so where, how we can access this? So let's go to our our new application. So we have we have processor called HTTP request. In HTTP request, we can configure on which host is running request starting, and default port will be 80. So this is the configuration we do it for, and then come back to our flow, and in the request. So if you look at the URL, right? this URL carefully after request there is the API users and if I want to make this dynamic if I want to send this as a URL parameter we can do that this way so this is the static part and then we are concatenating vars dot user ID okay and this vars dot user ID is coming from this variable okay and it is taking it from the URL parameter once I run this, okay, so if I go ahead and if I run like this, now, since meanwhile, I'll use utilize this time to explain this part. Now, let's say this service is secured, okay, with the client ID enforcement, where I can pass that information. We have query parameter here, we have header parameter. So we'll go ahead and pass that information over here. Okay, so client ID, if I say plus here, client ID, client ID value, client secret and client secret value. Okay. And if it is the post method, if it is a post method, this post method will take this value. And we have seen this, right? During our basic, uh, you know, mule sessions, we have talked about this, how to pass that payload as a body to the next next service, right? We have seen this. Yeah. Pass this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. If my is deployed, let's go ahead and look at the... So if I go ahead and run my... Okay, so there is no URL over there. So I'll go ahead and say slash users and slash uh, three, uh, if I trigger it, it should give me users slash the method not allowed. Okay. I was trying post method. Okay. See here, I'm able to see this for ID. This is the result we are getting. If I change now, 
here 10, let's say, it's actually going and hitting the external service and getting data for our 10. Okay. Let's quickly see how to consume the SOAP web service. This was the REST web service, right? Very easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's let's. Uh, I don't want to save anything. I didn't did did I change anything here? Nothing, right? Don't save. Close this also. Let's have a look at it. Consume web service. Okay, so to consume REST API, we have processor called HTTP requester. Can I use HTTP requester to consume the SOAP web service? Not really, okay? There is a way, I don't want to talk about that, okay? There is a way to, to use that, but we have dedicated processor to consume the SOAP web service. Let me talk about that. There is a processor something called web service consume okay so if i go ahead here and if you search for consume there is a web web service consumer so you need to drag that i have dragged it here okay and we need to configure this guy okay so let's look at this one so let me let me show you first the publicly available any uh, web service. So if I go here, there is a DNE online calculator. Okay, this is actually a SOAP web service. You can go ahead and you can really see the WSGL. Okay, enter. This is a WSGL. So for SOAP web service, we need a WSGL, and this WSGL will tell what all operations are available, okay? And what all results will be generated by those operations? And for that operation, what all parameters are required? This information will be there in the XML format. You need to be little XML expert to understand this, okay? So for example, here if you see, there is an add method and it generates that response. If you go to the add method, there are two parameters, int A and int B and both are required, both are integer. If you pass this to, it will take this input A and input B, it will perform addition on this and it will generate output for us, that is add result. That is again also integer. Similar goes for subtract, there is subtract method, the subtract response, the sub multiply and multiply response, divide, okay? Now, let me add little quick point over here, okay? So when we are trying to consume SOAP web service, okay? Now SOAP web service only understand XML and gives only XML. So if I want to trigger this, right? I need to build my XML request and I'll get a response as a XML. Now let's quickly do that. Okay, so let's come back to our flow here. Okay, so I need to build XML request, right? And we have seen how to build that XML request. So if you look at the preview here, you'll be able to see the XML request like this. Okay, so we are trying to trigger the method add method. And as I mentioned, int A and int B, we are trying to send those two values, 10 and 20. and Let's configure our web service consumer. Once we configure here, you need to tell where is the WSDL. Okay, so this we need to bring that W same URL, right? If you get, you can go here and say control T, control, not control T. Control W, control W. Here, copy this URL. Control C, come back to our any point studio and paste it here. Okay, once you paste it, it will try to bring the metadata, try to read that complete WSTL, and it will give you what all services are there. So there is a service called calculator. Okay, if you closely see, there is a service called calculator. Where you can find that service, it will show you here. 
calculator service. See, this is the calculator service. Now it is trying to map the port, calculator soap, calculator soap 12. If you go little up, it will show you both. This is called WHL, WHL binding, okay? So both options are there, calculator soap and calculator 12. If you go inside calculator soap or cap calculator uh, uh, 12, soap 12, it will show you add operation, subtract operation. Now, if you go little up, this operation will be defined over here. Okay, add soap input, output, everything in, in XML. Adds to integer, this is a test web service. And then complete definition of this service will be available on the top. Add input, this is the add. Add soap output, this is add response. Now, if you go refer this completely, it's coming from bottom to up, right? It's clear mm -hmm. that output will be add response. Now, have a look at it. Where is the add response? Here. What it is generating? Add result integer. What is the input? Add. Now, if you say add, it will take int A and int B. So this way, we need to understand the complete WSD. Okay. Okay. Now, come back here. This will this will pop up your your calculator and calculator soap and calculator 12 was there. So I just selected calculator soap from there. And this URL will be automatically popped up. You don't need to do anything for this URL. Okay. 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 Now, once that is available here, it will show you all the operations there. We have seen, right? Add, divide, multiply, and so mm -hmm. Yeah. I have selected add, add method from there. And that's it. I'll be sending payload. And that mm -hmm. payload is nothing but XML. And this guy will be generating output as XML. You can see here, it mm -hmm. will generate output as XML. On this activity itself, it will show you, okay? And this is this is something you see here at the right hand side. This is called data sense service. Data sense service. And this is provided by our Inpoint Studio itself with the help of tooling service. And this data sense service will give us a lot of information. See here what actually we expected and what is actually coming. See here, if, if you see here, what is expected? This guy, okay. int A and int B in XML format, right? Mm -hmm. So you can generate it here, okay? That XML request and then pass on to this guy and this will uh, go to that SOAP web service, execute that add method, generate the result and that result will back come back to us as XML. And then from that XML, we need to get the body okay, properly because this is how the, the output is getting generated. Payload, inside that there'll be a body, inside that there'll be add response, inside that there'll be add result. Okay. We know how to access that, right? Payload dot body dot add response. Uh, if you really want to keep it right, body, we know that how to do it. Double dot. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Save this everything and it's already actually running. So let's go ahead and not running that. I didn't, I think, ran this. Okay. So save this and that will be your last POC. Run this guy. What uh, by mistake we click on this package F explorer cancel that and this one this one yeah how can we get that back go to windows here mm -hmm. and show view package explorer project explorer everything is there okay if you unknowingly close anything you go ahead and bring it from here window okay. mm -hmm. Okay, I wanted to quickly show you something which will be very helpful. Now, if you look at my flow, right? This is very big and I need to scroll. Now, what if I want to take the, uh, the photo of this guy, snapshot of this guy? Either yes. I need to use some tool, right? Like snip, snipping tool or okay. I need to go back and do this something. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is a direct option over here. Okay, go ahead and select this guy. There is a there is a camera icon here, see? Yeah. It will take, take a step. picture of your complete complete flow and it will give you the image. If I go ahead and you know go to download here, 
save here right it will, it will go to go to download download and open this image so you'll be able to see that complete image okay okay very good image no blur nothing okay you can mm -hmm. yeah. now one more thing i wanted to show you okay since we are can i can i take 10 minute 10 extra more minute <laughs> yeah sure okay so now if you look at here right uh, there is something called uh, i just want to check which one i'm talking about yeah okay so now beautifully it will generate a documentation for us okay so the one snapshot i shown there is be, uh, uh, beside that there is a export studio documentation if i extract this okay i'll again extract it download select folder inside the download it's generating a documentation for us and this will be beautifully document okay now let's look at the document downloads mm. index.html okay so you can go ahead and create actually a folder and inside that you can you can i'll mm. say browser have a look at it consume soap if is right but each flow there'll be a link so get products by name it will take you to that you can you can see the xml code of it right make sure that you are not putting anything sensitive here okay keep that in mind okay. if i have to get all products don't you think this is a beautiful documentation right mm -hmm. if you want to demonstrate to someone right how you have written the flow this is the best way of doing it okay. and it studio you know creates for us mm -hmm. okay, okay. Yeah. yeah that's uh, all uh, okay before that let me go and uh what is that Telco so, Telco service, right? yeah. yeah so i'm sending 30 and 20 let's see what happens mm -hmm. we have said add, so it, it will be 50 right yeah see here mm -hmm. add result 50. Okay. if i change the data the, the output will get changed yeah. one more question to you uh yeah this etl type of project what we should keep in mind uh yeah. what should be like it should be there like in the project okay so you're talking about etl right yeah like so etl are basically see these are actually uh projects which process heavy data hmm. right so there will be heavy load over here right so we need to see and properly first see whether i'm getting a file so basically this is what extract transform and load yeah right now the one scenario for etl job you have already seen here if you remember carefully now if you see this 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 particular project this is exactly a copy of extract transform and load mm. see here scheduler is there no need to trigger this flow automatically periodically this flow will get triggered it will go to this database get the data instead of database you can have file system here you can have sftp here mm -hmm. go to that sftp take that sftp publish the content of sftp to the queue yeah and the batch processing is processing that data so batch processing is the best job to use and uh, to process the you know uh, heavy data it okay. will convert that file into a batches it will process that uh, uh, process those records parallelly reliably because backend it uses the persistent queue so try to see okay so th we need to keep something in mind okay the data should not be lost because this will be a transactional data so data is really important it has a cost make it reliable okay so by using messaging queues by using some object store batch job and try to run it parallel okay mm. so reliability has to be in mind and performance has to be in mind but reliability and performance are 
two ends of your thread. If you go for reliability, your performance will be go going down. And if I go for performance, your reliability will be going down because for performance, you'll be using your VMQs, right? But yeah. VMQs are not reliable solution, right? So we need to, we need to, uh, you know, smartly use both the options. Sometimes mm -hmm. we need to use object store to store the tokens, store the uh, credentials information or store uh, lightweight data. For internal load balancing, we need to use definitely we need to use VMQ. So we need to see how the you know, so as your question, right? Data is very important. Don't lose anything. Make it reliable solution. Okay. And try to run it, you know, uh, the the processes which can run this parallel. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll be reading data from one system and you need to send that data to multiple systems, right? Yeah. Use scatter gather. Mm -hmm. better, better option, right? We have scatter gather. Yeah. And inside the scatter gather, you can send it to the different systems. Mm. Right? Yeah. So when you're talking about ETL, you should talk about, you should think about bad job, mm -hmm. BMQs, and object store. These are really, really important. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 